Good evening from Mission Control in Houston and the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at the Johnson Space Center. You are looking live at the Soyuz MS-17 spacecraft attached, at least for the next few minutes, to the Poisk module docking port on the space-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. On board uh, that Soyuz vehicle at this hour, clad in their Russian Sokol launch and entry suits, are the three crew members of Expedition 64, who are just hours away from completing a 185-day mission with a parachute-assisted landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan. Strapped into their respective seats in the center section of the Soyuz in the descent module, NASA astronaut Kate Rubens, Sergei Rizhikov, the Soyuz MS-17 commander, and Sergei Kud Sverchkov, the International Space Station currently flying 270 miles uh, over the Indian Ocean moving from southwest to northeast in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. We are 18 minutes away from the actual physical separation of the Soyuz from the Poisk module. The undocking command that will initiate the opening of the hooks holding the Soyuz to the Poisk uh, will begin just under 16 minutes from now. It'll take about 90 seconds or so for those hooks to open. Springs on both sides of the docking interface will push off against one another to induce physical separation at a rate of one point uh, at a rate of 0.12 meters per second. That will be followed by a pair of separation burns from the Soyuz thrusters, the first one coming three minutes after physical separation, an eight-second firing of the thrusters, followed a minute and 20 seconds after that by a second separation burn of 15 seconds in duration to create an opening rate that will enable the Soyuz to drift away from the space station over the uh, course of the next couple of hours and put it in position for the deorbit burn that will enable uh, the Soyuz to drop out of orbit for its high-speed entry back to Earth and a landing that is scheduled at 11.56 p.m. Central Time, 10.56 a.m. Kazakhstan Time on Saturday morning. The uh, three crew members have uh, completed uh, leak checks on their Sokol launch and entry suits. They uh, closed uh, all of the hatches within the Soyuz spacecraft to the three uh, sections. The uppermost section of the Soyuz, that is the orbital module that is docked to Poisk, and the uh, back end module, the white section you see with the solar arrays, called the uh, instrumentation and propulsion module, where the engines are. All of the hatches are closed. Everything is in uh, good shape. Everything is leak tight. And uh, the crew is ready to begin the initiation of uh, the commanding that will enable them to depart the International Space Station. This crew will have spent 185 days in space and aboard the station, a mission uh, that will complete. Uh, itself in a couple of hours or so of 78.4 million statute miles, a mission encompassing 2,960 orbits of the Earth. Upon landing, Kate Rubens will have accrued 300 days in space on her two missions. Sergei Rizhikov will have completed 358 days in space on his two flights. Sergei Kudzverchkov is wrapping up his first mission into space of 185 days. About three hours ago, uh, the departing crew members, Rubens Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov, uh, bid a final farewell to uh, the crew members on board the International Space Station who uh, remain behind under the current command of uh, NASA astronaut Shannon Walker. This is a uh, quick replay of uh, the crew members saying farewell to one another in the uh, Poisk module making their way through the hatchway into the Soyuz uh, MS-17 spacecraft and then closing the hatch to the Soyuz to begin uh, final landing preparations. Those preparations included uh, checks of their Sokol launch and entry suits, as well as communications checks and other uh, systems checks. And there's the hatch swinging closed on the Soyuz side of the docking interface. That occurred at 5.24 p.m. Central Time, 6.24 p.m. Eastern Time. 
Here in Mission Control in Houston, uh, the Orbit 3 team of flight controllers on console at this hour, led by Flight Director Marcos Flores, joined on console by astronaut Zena Cardman, the spacecraft communicator. A uh, short time ago, they pulled uh, the flight controllers here in Houston uh, and received a go for undocking. Uh, Flores passed that on to his uh, Russian flight director counterpart at the Russian Mission Control Center in Karyov, outside of Moscow. And so the stage is set for uh, the undocking of the Soyuz MS-17 and the return of these three crew members back to Earth. Moscow Station and Space Command 1, the recording is on. Happy Alex, thank you very much. The uh, trip back home uh, for Rubens, Rizhikov, and Kudzvertkov uh, begins uh, just a few minutes from now with the undocking of the Soyuz uh, from the International Space Station, as you see in this animation. Over the course of the next couple of hours, the Soyuz moves to a safe distance away from the station for the deorbit burn. That is a retrograde braking maneuver, a firing of the Soyuz engines for four minutes, 38 seconds, to slow the Soyuz down by 128 meters per second, enabling it to drop out of orbit. About 31 minutes after undocking, pyrotechnic separation of the three sections occurs. That leaves the crew members alone in the descent module, the heat shield in the direction of travel to repel temperatures that will build to about 2,500 degrees around the spacecraft. Some 15 minutes before touchdown, the command will be issued to open the chutes at an altitude of about uh, 10.7 kilometers above the Earth. At that point, uh, first a drogue chute deploys, then a larger main chute deploys, and uh, an altimeter at the base of the Soyuz uh, feeds uh, computer information uh, that measures uh, the altitude and the rate of descent prior to a soft landing engine firing just a few feet above the ground, and the Soyuz will be home. Landing is scheduled at 11.56 p.m. Central Time, 12.56 a.m. Eastern Time, 10.56 a.m. in Kazakhstan. The landing targeted for a uh, open field about 91 miles to the southeast of the town of Jezkazgan. As you look at the MS-17 still attached to the Poisk as we prepare for undocking, the uh, Russian search and recovery forces under the uh, control of the uh, civilian agency Rosaviatsa, along with NASA embedded personnel, are currently uh, in the process of leaving their hotel in Jezkazgan, where they spent the night uh, after flying from the staging city of Karaganda, Kazakhstan, on an Antonov uh, military transport plane. They uh, forward positioned themselves in Jezkazgan, where a dozen Russian Mi-8 helicopters uh, were flown, some of them uh, having been positioned downrange uh, to a ballistic landing site closer to the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. In the unlikely event, a technical problem would create a shortfall in the Soyuz descent trajectory. However, uh, if everything goes as planned, the landing uh, will occur at 11.56 uh, p.m. Central Time. The uh, Russian uh, helicopters with NASA and Russian personnel on board will be deployed from Jezkazgan around the time of the deorbit burn uh, to uh, fly about 35 minutes or so to the landing zone where they will fly in a circular racetrack pattern around the zone to uh, await the arrival of the Soyuz under its main chute. Once the Soyuz touches down, the helicopters will land one by one in sequential fashion. Uh, the first helicopter uh, bearing uh, key uh, personnel from RSC Energia uh, that will uh, erect an inflatable medical tent nearby and begin the process of extracting the crew uh, through uh, the uh, hatch, depending on which hatch. Uh, that will uh, be determined by whether the Soyuz lands upright or is pulled on its side, as it sometimes is uh, wont to do, based on winds at the landing site. The weather uh, down at the landing site uh, southeast of Jezkazgan uh, is expected to be ideal. Just a few clouds at 25,000 feet are forecast. Visibility in six uh, plus miles. Temperatures around 64 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, it should be a beautiful Saturday spring morning for the return of Rubens, 
Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov. Copy. We sent the command. And we transitioned to display. Just eight and a half minutes away now from uh, the time uh, of physical separation. About an hour and a half ago, the hooks on the Poisk module side of the docking interface were opened. And again, the undocking command uh, that will open up the Soyuz hooks is expected about six and a half minutes from now. Mode inhibit command. And we have five, four, three, two. One, the command is sent. We confirm a dynamic mode inhibit has been removed. E2, India 2, command went through. Bdus is um, confirmed. Repress of the KDU is confirmed, and we're turning on the accelerometer. And you are receiving... At the time of physical separation here, just a few minutes from now, Expedition 64 will formally come to an end, and Expedition 65 will begin under the command of uh, NASA astronaut Shannon Walker on your left. She is uh, joined in this picture on and on board the station by her SpaceX uh, Dragon Crew-1 crewmates, Victor Glover, Mike Hopkins, and Soichi Noguchi. Joining them to form a seven-person crew are the three crew members who were launched uh, and arrived at the station just one week ago. Mark Vandehei, NASA flight engineer, Oleg Novitsky, and Pyotr Dubrov. That uh, seven-person crew will expand to an 11-person crew next Thursday when the Crew-2 crew that arrived at the Kennedy Space Center earlier today blasts off in the SpaceX Crew Dragon Endeavor from Launch Pad 39A at the Cape. They are led by uh, Mission Commander uh, Shane Kimbrough on the right, uh, joined by Megan MacArthur, Thomas Pesquet of the European Space Agency, and Aki Hoshide of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, who will become uh, Space Station Commander, taking over from Shannon Walker on April 27th, on the eve of the Crew 1's departure from the orbital complex. Um, wide angle. We're using the wide angle lens. No. Stay on the narrow one. Copy. And we will use the HSC mode one. Copy. From the now just uh, six minutes away from undocking, everything in good shape. <laughs> Russian flight controllers uh, in this live balcony camera view of the uh, Russian Mission Control Center Space Station Flight Control Room in Koryov outside of Moscow. Backup SSVP is no longer illuminated. Moscow Favore. One minute before undock, we are ready. And at 4.31, 30, we are ready to send the commands. Uh, that is right. Prepare D Delta 7 command. Copy. Again, a great view from space station external cameras of the Soyuz MS-17, Rubens, Rizhikov, Kud, Sverchkov, all set uh, to depart the International Space Station that has been their home for the past six months and begin the trip back to Earth and a parachute-assisted landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan. We are receiving the video. Bobby, you're receiving the video. I think you was good in minute. Hold on, go ahead on fish gun front. So we are getting the image from the vehicle and uh, we are getting the image of the other camera and the images are the same. Yes, I could see that they switched over just now.
In this view, uh, coming from uh, a camera on the Soyuz MS-17, looking at the docking target on the Poisk module, you'll uh, be seeing both views, both from space station external cameras and the Soyuz, as uh, the Soyuz spacecraft and its three occupants uh, back away from the orbital complex. Sergey Ryzhikov, the Soyuz commander, under the call sign of Favore, is in the center seat of the descent module, flanked on his left by Kud Sverchkov and on his right by Kate Rubens. Switching to narrow angle. One minute away from the command to initiate the opening of the hooks holding the Soyuz in place at the Poisk module. One. Uh, sending command D7, D15. Uh, arm uh, command uh, D17 to open the hooks. Copy. Going to page 42 and arming command to open the hooks. The International Space Station currently flying over Mongolia, uh, about to cross the border into China. To fire the command to open the hooks. At the specified time, you are go to open the hooks. Copy. Standing by for the command to begin the opening of the hooks. Three, two, one, command sent. And the hooks are driving open. Is no longer illuminated. Electrical connections uh, not illuminated. Uh, the um, uh, transfer hatch closed. LED is on. Copy. One minute away from physical separation. Just a quick reminder for you that um, at physical separation, the timers will start automatically. Copy. Moments away from the springs on both sides of the docking interface to push off against one another to begin physical separation. Copy. During the separation, please make sure there are no fod uh, around the perimeter of the docking interface. I copy. I will provide you a running commentary on that. Thank you. Yes. Undocking confirmed. Separation. On time at 8.34 p.m. Central Time, 9.34 p.m. Eastern Time, as the International Space Station flew 258 statute miles over the Mongolian Chinese border. Moving away in our small vehicle. Rubens, Rizhikov, and Kud Sverchkov on their way home for a landing less than three and a half hours from now. Uh, the range is about 10 meters. <laughs> and we have aggregate uh, readiness of um, docking system. Four zero, oh, four zero three is the exact time of undocking. We're not seeing any FOD around the perimeter of the docking interface. Copy.
Expedition 65 now officially underway aboard the International Space Station as uh, the three crew members on the Soyuz MS-17 begin their trek home. I uh, can view the entire uh, docking interface and I can confirm the docking interface uh, is uh, clear of all f of FOD. The range uh, between the station and the service vehicle is about 10 meters, and we still have aggregate uh, readiness of the attitude control system. And this view from Soyuz cameras. And by for the first separation burn. Showing uh, the uh, Soyuz's perspective, okay. looking right back at the docking port on the Poisk module. Just seconds away from the first of uh, two separation burns by the uh, Soyuz uh, vehicle. This will be an eight second burn to increase its opening rate away from the orbital laboratory. Depots. Uh, uh, started firing exactly three minutes after the un undocking. 7.9 seconds of uh, depot uh, firing. Right now we are rolling to the left. Um, the um, roll maneuver is complete. The range is currently about 30 meters. Standing by for the second sub burn. Good thruster uh, activity. First separation burn was right on the money. Standing by for the second. We see the uh, motion control system readiness. Yep, we confirm aggregate uh, attitude control system readiness. Um, in five seconds, stand by for the second set burn. Copy. Depots are on at four minutes, 20 uh, seconds after the physical separation. Um, we are moving towards um, the U.S. segment of the station. 14 decimal or seconds. And the second separation burn now complete and reported to be good. No issues. This view again from the Soyuz as it uh, begins a faster opening rate away from the space station. 18. Um, to, um, Soyuz departure uh, this evening coming amidst a period of activity in which 14 astronauts and cosmonauts are coming and going from the station in four different spacecraft over a three-week period in addition to two vehicle relocations, one by this very Soyuz MS-17 spacecraft back on March 19th, followed a few days later by the um, relocation of the Crew-1 Dragon vehicle. Uh, the periscope to um, approach mode. And you can uh, remove uh, the maneuver flag. Copy. We want to um, address 11. Copy and confirm. Go ahead. We have maneuver. It's gone. Uh, depots are position closed. Are on. And we're monitoring the. Yeah. So, uh, affirmative. Uh, you have a go to put the cover there into the closed position. Copy. Have a go. 
On your go, uh, we'd like to remove the uh, uh, inhibit for command execution uh, uh, confer confirmation. You are going to do that. Use address 2. Enter the number. Entering. <laughs> Inhibit of um, <laughs> confirmation <laughs> or acknowledgement of multiple vehicles in the field of view. The uh, Crew 1 Crew Dragon Resilience in the foreground. Right behind it, uh, the Soyuz MS-17 departing, heading for a landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan at 11.56 p.m. Central. Um, confirmed. Selecting. Uh, go ahead and turn off um, SSVPM. Uh, docking mechanism. Copy. That's command D-8. Uh, D-8. D8 has been uh, fired. D7, D17 are not illuminated. Turning off the flight light. Flight light is turned off. And we're going to put uh, the translation hand controller into the stowage or transportation position. Copy and concur. Sergey. Uh, the juxtaposition of uh, the current space program and the future target, the Crescent Moon, Copy. nearby uh, as the Soyuz continues to depart the neighborhood of the International Space Station. Translational hand controller is in the transportation position. Copy. TVS uh, display. I have armed the command to TV off, OFF. Ready to fire the command. Command has been fired and executed. TV is off. Copy. Please let us know uh, when you'd like to get the SCADU parameters. You can uh, give it to us now. The first section of uh, pressure tank pressure is 162. Copy. Sec section 2 pressure tank um, Pressure is 164, and prop is 460. Copy. Soyuz Commander Sergei Rizhikov uh, reporting in, uh, fuel in, parameters and uh, tank yeah. pressures to uh, the Russian flight controllers uh, in the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow. Uh, the reduced pressure alarm disconnection from control circuit. Command A of uh, five. Good view of the Soyuz MS-17 uh, with Rubens Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov uh, on board. Um, Eleven minutes now uh, since the undocking of the Soyuz. Next stop, Kazakhstan. Off. And the off nominal. Uh, Uh, off nominal situations, our ODF is um, restaged. Copy that. The next uh, milestone is um, yeah. at 055500. Okay, so that means we'll see you in over an hour. 
Uh, yes, yeah, just make sure that you know, or you remember that um, um, so you are in dynamic enabled mode on the vehicle, so uh, be sensitive to that. And well, the uh, three crew members aboard the uh, Soyuz MS-17 have departed the International Space Station. The uh, search and recovery forces and embedded NASA personnel have departed their hotel in Jezkazgan, the staging site for tonight's landing operations. They'll be making their way to the Jezkazgan airport to position themselves on their respective Russian Mi-8 helicopters awaiting takeoff around the time of the deorbit burn headed for the landing zone. This is Mission Control Houston. If you're just joining us, you're looking at the Soyuz MS-17 spacecraft that departed uh, the International Space Station 14 minutes ago under the command of Russian cosmonaut Sergei Ryzhikov, accompanied by NASA's Kate Rubens and Russian cosmonaut Sergei Kudzverchkov. They are now free-flying from the station, moving to a point uh, well away from the complex for the deorbit burn that will take place to begin their journey home, the deorbit burn scheduled at 11.01 .01 p.m. Central Time tonight. The uh, three crew members on board the Soyuz MS-17 will now have a bit of uh, free time until uh, a little over an hour from now when they'll tag up with uh, the Russian flight controllers uh, at the Russian Mission Control Center to uh, receive a briefing on uh, weather conditions in the landing area, the atmospheric pressure inputs uh, for their control panel, and other uh, checks of their systems prior to the time that they approach uh, the deorbit burn. Our 
It should be a splendid Saturday morning for a landing uh, in Kazakhstan with, again, just a few clouds forecast at 25,000 feet, visibility in excess of six miles, and temperatures uh, to greet the three crew members of about 64 degrees Fahrenheit. Which would be better, or do you want me to put them into the generic one? That's awesome. Better a folder, yes. It will be called MS-17. MS-17, fantastic. Thank you. Now that uh, the undocking has occurred, uh, let's look forward uh, to the deorbit burn that is planned for 11.01 p.m. Central Time, a 4 minute 38 second retrograde braking maneuver to slow the Soyuz down, enabling it to drop out of orbit. Some 28 and a half minutes later, the pyrotechnic separation of the three sections of the Soyuz, the crew in the center section called the descent module. With the heat shield in the direction of travel, the uh, Three crew members will have G-forces building up around them to about three or four Gs or so, their maximum G-loads. About 15 minutes before touchdown, the command sequence is initiated to first deploy a large drogue chute, followed by an even larger main parachute. The Soyuz will cant into the right orientation, and uh, just a few seconds before touchdown, soft landing engines at the base of the Soyuz will fire in a final braking maneuver, and uh, the crew will be home on the steppe of Kazakhstan with landing scheduled at 11.56 p.m. Central Time, 10.56 a.m. Kazakhstan Time on Saturday morning. Once uh, the landing occurs, the uh, search and recovery forces will be uh, touching down one by one in the MI-8 helicopters that they will be boarding soon at the airport in Jezkazgan for about a 35-minute flight uh, from Jezkazgan to the landing zone. Once uh, the helos are on the ground, uh, first off will be the uh, erection of an inflatable medical tent nearby where the three crew members will be carried into for initial medical tests shortly after they have a few minutes uh, in uh, comfortable chairs outside of the uh, spacecraft once they're extracted one by one. The uh, medical tests uh, should take uh, about an hour and a half or so, after which uh, the three crew members will, will be brought uh, into respective helicopters uh, nearby for about a two hour and 15 minute flight to the uh, staging city in Karaganda, uh, where all of the uh, various uh, uh, respective parties uh, supporting landing tonight in Kazakhstan uh, first began uh, their uh, meetings and uh, reviews of landing conditions a few days ago. It uh, once back in Karaganda, Kate Rubens uh, will board a uh, NASA aircraft for a flight back to Houston while Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov will board a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft for a flight back to their training base in Star City, Russia, outside of Moscow.
To recap, uh, the Soyuz MS-17 has undocked from the International Space Station, that occurring on time at 8.34 p.m. Central Time. Kate Rubens, Sergei Ryzhikov, and Sergei Kudsverchkov are now moving to a safe distance away from the station for the uh, final leg of their journey home and a parachute-assisted landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan just before midnight central time tonight. We will be back on the air in about an hour and a half at 10.30 p.m. Central Time, 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time with our deorbit burn and landing coverage. And again, you see the times there of the deorbit burn, 11.01 p.m., landing at 11.56 p.m. We will be on the air with all of the post-landing activities at the landing site. So we'll see you back here at Mission Control in Houston in an hour and a half. Thanks for joining us. This is Mission Control Houston.